As a public defender, Judge Karen fought for her client's rights. She was elected to the bench because she believes in doing the right thing. I'm very passionate about helping people, period. Sometimes life pulls you from up here to down here to teach you a lesson, and you're in a valley right now. There are lessons in this valley. I hope you learn from them. Objective, independent justice. You can always turn your life around. If you keep walking, you can overcome whatever circumstances you're facing. This is Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Sharon Rosen is suing Margie Connors in the amount of $5,000. Ms. Rosen claims she agreed to donate some dresses to charity, but says Ms. Connors took additional items and donated them as well. Ms. Connors claims the box wasn't labeled properly, so she shouldn't be held accountable for the lost items. All right, Ms. Rosen, you're suing Ms. Connors for $5,000. It represents the value of some gowns that you own. Is that right? right. Correct, Your Honor. And how do you know the defendant? Um, our daughters go to school together, but I'm the founder of a charity called Glamour Girls. Glamour Girls. Right. Okay. I never got to go to my prom because my parents didn't have a lot of money. So I now have a boutique and I sell gowns and I thought it would be a really nice thing to do for some underprivileged women so they could have a memorable prom night okay. to start a charity um, and donate. You need to speak up a little bit. Sorry, to start a charity and donate the gowns. Okay, so you started a charity Correct. so women can donate their gowns for underprivileged girls, high school, for um, prom. I donate the gowns. I now own a boutique. Right. So any of the gowns that aren't sold during the year. Oh, you donate I your donate. extra gowns. Right. Okay, I see. So women can wear them for their prom night. We also do a fashion show and the proceeds, we charge admittance to the fashion show where they model the gowns. And, and where the does the money go? Where the proceeds are going to, where? To charity. To, to which charities? Well, for, for their prom night, because okay. not only oh, do they need them. gowns, the, the, right, the they need to pay for whatever limo, else, food. Food. transportation, hair exactly. done, Exactly, so we just try to, to set up a nice that's a really, night for that's these a, ladies. That's a nice charity. Yeah, thank you. So uh, Marjorie has been doing it with me for the past five years, okay. unfortunately. Okay, so you two are friends then? We were. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what were yeah. you doing, Marjorie? I am the co I'm the co-organizer. So I basically the organizer of the you got, fashion show. That's event. right. Okay. Of the event. And then I call all the attendees to make right. sure they can attend the event, send okay. out the emails and, and pretty much do all the behind the scenes work. Okay, for so, that fashion show. That's right. right okay. Correct. And so who are the women that participate in the fashion show? Well, we have volunteers. Okay. But the issue that I'm here to discuss wait, is... Wait, wait, I need to... I always have to understand the backdrop. Okay. So the fashion show, the women that are in the fashion show are the girls that are going to the prom or the women that are part of your charity or um, in social circles? Just volunteers in the community. Just, they just volunteer to help. Correct. To come and, and participate in the fashion show. And the Correct. money that people pay to see these women in the fashion show is what you give to charity. Correct. That's right. Okay. All right. So now we've we've held this fashion show how many times? Five years. For, for five, five years. years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what? It went on without a hitch all the previous years. That's right. So what happened this year? Um, this last year, I host, so I'm on stage, and I had a box of gowns that I was going to donate to charity, as I do every year. It was clearly marked donations. Right. And then I had the gowns that I had been wearing throughout the event as I host. These were gowns that I had gotten on my second honeymoon in France with my husband. They were custom made. They were in no way going um, to the charity. Right. And she was aware of this, so at the end of the night, I saw everything had been taken from the room. My gowns were now, gone. Now, in the past, when you've donated gowns, you bring them to the charity event to donate? Is that how they're donated? Um, no, and that didn't happen this time either. I had the box in my change room, which right. Marjorie was supposed to take to the charity. Right. And in the past, did you bring a box to your change yeah. room? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we've always so done. So you've but always but brought a box to the change room of gowns that you're going to be donating to charity, right? Right. Yes. So was there anything, Miss Connors, that was different about this time? No, I mean, she said, you know, the box is in the room. You know, my donations are in the room. Right. And um, so I saw the box. It was labeled donations. And she said, my assistant will label anything that's not for donations. It would say, like, not for donations. And I did not see that. I saw the box. It said donations. Right. And there were these two dresses right above 
also with the box, I definitely assume it was all for the charity. So I, I don't understand. You're having a fashion show. I've gotten dressed up and I'm in my gown to go to a fashion show, but I'm also dragging along some gowns and I'm donating to charity well, so that the charity can take them that night? No, no, no. The gowns, she only donates the gowns for the charity. She gives a lot. She gives like 30 gowns so that there's a, enough for women I in the see. community. So what happened? How did you find out that you, she had basically given away your gowns? Well, I didn't even find out it was her until a week later. I had blamed it on my assistant. My assistant and Marjorie were the only ones that had access to this room. So right. when I went and saw that the gowns were gone, I assumed it was my assistant. Right. And then come to find out a week later that it was Marjorie. Coming up on Supreme Justice. This lady here sounds like she cares more about the girls than you care about the girls. No, it's the principle. This okay. is my It's friend. not about principle. If you're doing this for the good of others, these are material things. Five years from now, you might be too fat to wear these gowns. And later, but that's not a prize. That's well, a wage that was earned. Yeah, but it, it wasn't earned. Before it's earned, it's, it's like a prize, something that you will achieve at the end. Closed captioning provided by... If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Sharon Rosen, who is suing Margie Connors for property loss. Do we have pictures of the gown? I do. I have it right here. Let me see the pictures. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, did, did you try to call? What, which, which organization took the gowns? Where um, did the gowns it's called, go? The organization's called Dress for Girls. Okay. And so they, and they, what we do is we donate it that evening because the next morning we let the girls in the community know the dresses are there for you in the shop. You know, right. please go. It's called Dresses for Girls. Mm. And that shows this is your honor. Dress? The two dresses hanging up. So they're separate from the box, clearly marked. How is it that you happen to have a picture of the dresses and the box? My assistant took a picture because she wanted me to know that she had done the box. I asked her earlier in the day, right. did you put the gowns in the box and right. label it? So she sent me this picture as proof. And as you can see there, the gowns are hanging. Right. So there's no reason to grab them when you're taking the box. Just take the box and go. It looks go. all together well, to what me. I don't understand is that you told me she's done this every year for the past four or five years yeah. and it was always in a box. It's always Correct. in a box, but right. then she had these extra ones. So I did. I asked her assistant. I said, are these going too? And her assistant said, oh, yeah. And oh, then so her, her assistant said that these... Yeah, I said, uh, are you sure? They're not... Is, no, is, did, did you not call her honor. as a witness? Um, I didn't, but, you know, my assistant well, never told Well, when me. you knew you got served with papers on a lawsuit that you had basically given away somebody's gowns, and you knew your defense was, wait a minute, you, her assistant told me, you got a problem. Who, me? And your problem is, is that for five years, this woman has always given her donations in a box. Uh, secondly, she had worn these dresses that night at the event as the hostess. Exactly. She had worn these actual dresses. Yeah, I know it was busy. You were flitting around. But she's always done the donations the exact same way. And if your defense was, oh, no, her assistant told me to take them, then when you're preparing to go to trial and present a case, you bring witnesses. If my only witness was this person, I would have subpoenaed this person. And you would have gone down to the clerk's office and they would have helped you to serve her assistant to come and testify. But you didn't do that. The burden is on the plaintiff to come forward with evidence. She's come forward with the dresses. She says she even wore the dresses that night. Wow. You testified that she always, for five years, has given you these dresses and boxes. And she knows I wouldn't be giving that to charity. The dresses that I donate to charity are more like two, three hundred dollars. I would never be giving. So you give to just charity. your cheap dresses to charity. Right. <laughs> well, well, I, I give, don't my, sell I in give my expensive gowns to charity. <laughs> The girls were so happy about these dresses, though. We got letters and emails right. about these beautiful gowns. How I did not do anything on purpose. Yes. I can imagine. It doesn't matter if you didn't do it on purpose. They were her gowns. What's going to happen now to the event every year now that you are in a court case with the co-presenter of this event? Yeah, and the girls suffer now because I, I'm not doing this charity with her anymore. I can't trust well, her. Well, can't you find somebody else to do it with? 
I can, but it will just be hard to trust people going forward. Well, because you lost two dresses. Come on. <laughs> if it was all about the girls, this is material. Yeah. This is material. It's and the you're principle. telling me how, how this, this lady here sounds like she cares more about the girls than you care about the girls. No, it's the principle. This okay. is my It's friend. not about principle. If you're doing this for the good of others, these are material things. Five years from now, you might be too fat to wear these gowns. I hope that you go on trying to help. I definitely will. Okay? I will. I want I'm to. I'm going to give you my number so you can call me. I got okay. a oh truckload Thank of dresses. You. A truckload. Yes. I got I got a storage Thank unit full oh of clothes. Oh, my gosh. This is wonderful. That I can give. But you can <laughs> No, I mean, because we can continue the tradition. That's what I and then, want you to continue doing yes, this for the girls for, because it's say, not about what I paid, and I paid more than some the money you paid. It's, and this is from Judge Karen. This is from I Judge mean, Karen. This is so wonderful. Well, it's, it's, I'm happy to see how happy you are because yes. you still got to pay the five thousand. I just well, why can't we just give it to the charity? I mean, that's really because what the, the money... five thousand doesn't belong to the charity; it belongs to Miss Rosen. Well, maybe she'll give it back if I have to pay how, her back. How much time do you need to pay her? I can give you. Time to pay. Yeah, I, I don't make as much money as she does. Right. So I'm going to need 12 months. Okay. I'm going to give her 12 months to pay because her heart is in the right place. She just wasn't thinking straight. Uh, that's not a defense, though. Mm -hmm. And one monkey don't stop no show because I got dresses to give to the charity. Thank you. Okay? Well, maybe yep. you and, and so we can continue to, to have the fashion show. No, I think I'd rather be with the defendant on it. Yeah, <laughs> she'll, she'll steal from you, uh, but okay. You can continue having the fashion show and helping some of these girls to go to the prom. Thank okay, you. Okay, but you need to start paying that money. I'm gonna give you 30 days to start. <laughs> okay. And then you have 12 months to pay the whole thing. That's All right, I'm error. ready to rule judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000. Good luck to you. Yeah. All rise. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $5,000. I believe you donated my dress as a charity on purpose, so I deserve the $5,000. Well, I'm happy to pay you the $5,000, and I hope you can donate that to another charity. Coming up. And I don't know, you hire, how much do you weigh? You hire this small person to drag down sofas from upstairs and settees from downstairs and file cabinets and boxes yeah, well, and whatever. Well. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. College student Mark Stevens is suing Larry Turner in the amount of $375. Mr. Stevens claims Mr. Turner hired him to help empty out his house, but says the defendant never paid him for the work. Mr. Turner claims he didn't pay Mr. Stevens because the plaintiff didn't finish the job and damaged his house in the process. Mr. Stevens, you're suing Mr. Turner for $375 for a breach of a contract to do some work at his house? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, what kind of help were you looking for? I'm selling my house. I still had a lot of stuff, books and shelves and books. Okay, shelves. so what was the agreement, Mr. Stevens, as to what, what your understanding of what you were going to do with the house? Uh, we discussed taking things out of the attic, the basement, uh, furniture, uh, moving it on to the front yard. Okay, so you show up there, you agree that you're going to pay him $375. For each day. Oh, per day? Per day. Okay. Were you happy with things done on the oh, first day? He did a fa fantastic job. Um, okay. After the work, paid him his money. He gave the 375 Told him I'll see him tomorrow. All right. So then what happened? Um, he told me he was going to be out at noon with his uh, realtor. Right. So he left at noon. And he said to finish up while he was gone. So this is kind of where the discrepancy comes in. Uh, I didn't know whether or not to move some of the filing cabinets in the basement out or not because I opened them up. And there was stuff with papers, uh, documents, uh, photocopied uh, Where were you IDs. supposed to move these things to? The front lawn. Okay. But um, you didn't have a way to call him on the phone? I called him on the phone. He didn't okay. answer. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable taking possibly sensitive documents and leaving them on the front lawn. Coming up. You hire, how much do you weigh? You hire this small person to drag down sofas from upstairs. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Mark Stevens, who is suing Larry Turner for breach of contract. 
Okay, so you got back home at 8. Yes. That night. Yes. And what was the problem? There were still some boxes with books and stuff in the attic. Right. Trash and stuff is still on the floor. There's still some chairs there. There's some eyes Do in there. Do you have pictures? Or um, did you take pictures? Of I only it? took pictures of the damage. What there was damage, damage was there? On the, on the banister, it was damaged. On the front door, it was damaged. But my question is, why didn't you call him when you got home and discuss what happened? Did he call you? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, when was the next time you two had a conversation? The next then? day, the Monday. Okay, next so day. what happened to that conversation? I uh, called him on Monday and said, can I collect the check? And he said, come to my office. Okay. So uh, I went to his office in the business building. And uh, he told me he was not going to pay me because he did not feel that I did an adequate job. And he reiterated that in the email that there was a prize to be gained by cleaning his house and I didn't meet up to the prize. I don't know he why. He said that to you in an email also? Yes. Let me see the email. What prize? <laughs> he he kind of misinterpreted. You'll, you'll, you'll get an understanding of it. Let's see if I get yeah, it. Yeah, you'll get an understanding of it. When you are given a task with a prize, if the work isn't done co completely or correctly, you can't expect to still receive that prize. What was the prize? Well, if you keep reading, you'll see that's related to a job This is especially job, true when you go out you. of your way to do the job badly. You can keep the money from the first day. Where's the prize? The prize is the pay. But that's not a prize. That's well, a wage that was earned. Yeah, but it, it wasn't earned. When it's before it's earned, it's, it's like a prize, something that you will achieve and gain at the end. Judge Karen's verdict when Supreme Justice returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Wow, so you mean at the end of my day to day, I could expect a prize? I better have a check. <laughs> That, that check should be like a prize. Is that how you feel about the university where you work? Well, if I Did do a good job, rewarded? if I do a good job, right. I expect to get rewarded financially. No. You should have called him. You said he did a beautiful job the first day. You missed a call from him. And then instead of talking to him, you summon him into your office like the grand pool bar and talk about a prize and what you're going to learn. No, and that blah, was blah, the blah, email. Blah. That was we the email. could have learned a lesson by having had a conversation and coming back here to complete the job, which it sounds to me like what he's saying. He's done most of the job. You didn't send me any, you didn't bring me any pictures to see what was left there. And I don't know, you hire. How much do you weigh? You hire this small person to drag down sofas from upstairs and settees from downstairs and file cabinets and boxes yeah, well, and whatever. Well, you could have hired a moving company him, for less money than you paid him to move that stuff out I onto your lawn. I'm ready to rule. somebody roll. else with him. I'm ready to rule. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $375. Good luck to you. All rise. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $375. Professor Turner, I'm sorry it came to this, but I am happy to collect my check today. Well, son, I think we both learned a lesson on this. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.